Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, as we come to the end of Occult Detective October, I've got a review for you of Occult Detective Magazine, issue 10. So Cult Detective Magazine is rapidly becoming one of my favourite publications. So it's edited by uh, John Linwood Grant and Dave Brzezinski. Um, and it's always, always entertaining. Um, so think of it as, um, so rather than think of it as a magazine, because I, t- I think we tend to think about magazines in a different way nowadays. And this is a magazine in, in the style of, I suppose, like the kind of old sci-fi magazines like Analog and things like that of, of the 60s and 70s, where, um, you know, a magazine would publish short fiction. We tend not to think of magazines as publishing short fiction nowadays. We tend to think of them as being about, you know, particular interests or, you know, like health focus focused or beauty focused or or things like that but you know clearly magazines used to be a huge publisher of short fiction and and many writers would you know spend their whole careers just writing for magazines and you know writing fiction for magazines and you know make a living out of that which sadly is not something that happens um, anymore so a cult detective magazine kind of I suppose harks back to those glory days of, of fiction publishing in magazines um, but if you wanted to to think of it in a, in a different way, in a non magazine way, think of it as a a regular um, series of like anthologies of short fiction. Um, so, like the you know in the UK, we used to have the the pan. Um, horror fiction anthologies uh, edited by uh, Herbert Van Thal, which I remember fondly from charity shops as a kid, um, which always had really spooky covers. So, you know, those were regularly published horror anthologies that you could, you know, rely on to, to serve up interesting horror fiction. Um, a, cult detective, a cult detective magazine does exactly that, but also includes articles as well. So so this issue, issue 10, which is the, the summer 2023 issue, um, has 10 short stories. Um, and at least at least one of them I would call a novella rather than a short story. So, you know, decent, decently long piece of fiction. Uh, it's got three articles and then it's also got reviews of uh, occult detective novels and, and books and things like that as well. So there's a there's a lot going in here, uh, going on in here. Um, and don't let occult detective as a as a label put you off it sounds very specialized but what you are really getting here is is a, a series of interesting short stories horror short stories and and the occult detective subgenre actually you know covers loads of stuff within uh, you know within the the broader horror genre so we've talked about that i think in you know in some of the uh, announcement videos and introduction videos for a cult detective october the the reading event we've been running this october uh, that was created by mj from the channel reading this life so you know there are so many examples of a cult detective fiction out there but it's but it's not a label that we are necessarily that familiar with and, and indeed you know even as a long-term fan of the horror genre i hadn't really heard that label before i started making booktube videos um, but a cult detective stories really are um something i love in that they're kind of at that intersection between mystery fiction and horror fiction so typically you know a a detective figure and they don't need to be a professional detective indeed what my favorite story in this one is is really about someone who's kind of an amateur detective who just falls into investigating this this mystery um so you know a central character who is investigating a mystery that has some sort of supernatural element to it um and that can be, uh, you know, it can be ghostly or it can be other things. And many of the classic occult detective stories are, um, you know, stories where there are a series of stories about the same detective. And indeed, in this issue of Occult Detective magazine, there are, I think, at least a couple of stories which are, you know, fall into that. So they are about pre-existing characters who exist in, you know, novel, novel series and things like that already. And you get, you know, a little extra short story about that character in here. Um so yeah, often about recurring detective characters, but they don't have to be. Um, so what what do you get here? So as, as I said, you get ten stories, and there's a real nice variety to the stories. So there's like there's there's a werewolf story in here, which was a lot of fun. Um, there is uh, there are a couple of stories that kind of pastiche the the Victorian style of occult detective fiction, which is you know when occult detective fiction really started. Um, 
you get some you know some with a much more modern feel um you get some that are you know kind of lightly humorous so there's one that's kind of got a bit of a, a cozy cozy mystery kind of feel to it um and you get some that are you know really really interestingly creepy as well which you know we always want from our horror fiction don't we my favorite story and, and you also get some with nice illustrations as well so things like like that so there are some some really nicely done illustrations um in this my favorite story was was the final one which is also the longest one uh the nature of panic by simon avery um which is about a guy who's kind of a bit of a a bit of a waste really who's um i think he's doing like he's working on a farm for the summer doing like fruit picking um and he's a middle-aged guy uh he's got kind of relationship troubles and things like that but he falls into investigating with a guy who he meets through this fruit picking um a um a, a weird you know a weird instance that has happened in the local area and it leads him to investigating a local family and things like that it's just a beautifully done story i definitely made me keen to read more by simon simon avery um in that the character work in this story was was great but just the teasing out of the mystery was really really well handled as well and you you get that wonderful feeling that you get with really good horror stories of you know gradually understanding more and more about what is actually going on and that you know becoming creepier and creepier but just some wonderful atmospheric stuff in this story as well not just on the creepy side but just on the kind of you know lazy the lazy summer side if you like so that that sense of just uh, you know chilling out in the summer and having a good time was was really nicely captured in the story as well so I, I thought that was a really really great story but all the stories in here are fun and and they are all different from each other so you never get a kind of sense of sameness despite the fact that the the, the niche that this you know this magazine is about is a reasonably tight niche um there's a wonderful variety to, to the stories and that's what I meant when I said you know it's it's something that feels quite tight but is actually quite broad in terms of it being something which is really prevalent in, in horror fiction generally. Um, so yes, the stories are all really good. You get some, some reviews as well. Um, so there's a, a review section at the end with reviews of, I think, about half a dozen books, um, at least a couple of which I'm really interested to read now, having read the reviews. Um, and you also get some articles. So there's a really good article by MJ from the channel Winning This Life um, about a, a, an occult detective series from the 70s, the Satan Sleuth series. Um, so MJ had read those books, did an article about the series, but also has an interview with the son of the author, uh, which was really interesting and shed interesting interesting light on the, um, on the novels. Um, and then a fantastic article called, let me make sure I get it right, called the, uh, the Occult Detective Genres, Potential for Radical Representation and Social Justice uh, by Maria de Blasi, which is a really interesting article about how the, like, the origins of the occult detective genre, as I said, are kind of Victorian. And, you know, those stories are um, about, you know, about middle aged white guys solving, you know, solving mysteries and tend to be, you know, very centred on, you know, the, the, the experience of middle aged white guys and, and often have um, like foreign foreign things portrayed as bad. So, you know, evil artefacts coming from abroad and things like that. Um, so in the article, Maria de Blasi talks about how, you know, those, those are the origins of the genre, but over time it's become a really, really inclusive genre. Um, you get lots of examples of like queer representation in, in a cult detective, um, you know, fiction and movies and things like that, but also, um, you know, representation of loads of different, you know, social groups, different races and things like that. So a really, really interesting article, very nicely and meticulously researched. And it's got loads of really interesting examples um, of, you know, instances of, of really positive representation in more modern occult detective stuff. Um, so I really, really enjoyed that. And then there's also an interesting article about um, occult detective video games. So I used to be quite a big gamer. I'm not anymore. Um, if I was still a big gamer, I would definitely be interested in playing some of this, some of these games. So it's, it feels like it's a, a subgenre that's well represented in, in video games, particularly kind of indie video games um, at the moment. And, and particularly that style of video game that, you know, is very much about telling a story. Um, so that I, I thought it was interesting and, and great to see representation of different styles of occult detective storytelling. So not just prose stories, but also 
um, you know, also video games. So yes, a, a very interesting and enjoyable magazine. I do recommend it. You can get it on Amazon or you can get it from uh, the Occult Detective magazine website. So I will leave a link to that in the description. You can download, uh, there's an issue you can download for free. So that issue zero, um, you can download a digital copy of for free if you fancy check it out. So I'll leave, a, I'll leave a link for all of that in the description for the video so you can take a look. So I hope you found that interesting. If you're a fan of occult detective fiction, do let me know in the comments. Um, and as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're safe and well out there. I hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.